Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with a new series, Who Are the Gene Stealers? We start with Worshippers of the Xenos. Crawling out of the dark, cold corners of the Imperial Underworld come the Gene Stealer cults. Secretive, stealthy, and utterly malignant, they are the cankers growing unseen in the hidden spaces of humanity's realm. Some cultists are truly monstrous, skulking along dank tunnels with robes or hessen sacks covering their hybrid anatomies. Others are merely pallid and bald, able to pass for loyal citizens whilst their warm foreign tattoos remain hidden. These latter generation brethren mingle amongst the herd like wolves in sheep's clothing, working so hard amongst the crumbling machineries of mankind's industry that none spare them a second glance. But under their work fatigues and rough miners' apparel, they all bear the mark of the alien. The Gene Stealer Curse Pure strain gene stealers propagate with a hideous alien fecundity, infecting generations of imperial prey until the time is ready to strike. Each new batch of offspring seems more human than the last, as the Xenos germ seed is seemingly diluted. But within, the shape of the beast lurks unchanged. At the culmination of the cycle's curse, alien nightmares are born anew. When a gene stealer reaches a world, ripe for infestation. It will clamor into the dark and forgotten spaces of a populous area, lurking, unseen, as it prepares to spread its influence. As with all of their void-born kind, the gene stealer is inhumanly patient, able to subsist on very little sustenance and to wait for decades, if necessary, before making its move. Once it is certain of being able to acquire victims whilst remaining undetected, it will begin to abduct them and implanting them with its alien blight to make them unwitting hosts for a new generation of terror. A cult can start with but a single tyrannid organism. Should a lone gene stealer reach an inhabited world, it will immediately go into hiding, emerging only in the blackest of nights. Those who fall prey to the gene stealer's silent ambushes are not simply torn apart for later consumption, as with most of the victims of the tyrannid race, but instead, put in thrall by its hypnotic gaze. They are then impregnated with a portion of the creature's own biomass, delivered under the skin via a ribbed tube called an ovipositor. This process is known as the gene stealer's kiss. The resultant parasitism alters the body until the Xenos taint runs throughout. It also alters the mind, forcing the victim to revere the gene stealer as a messianic figure, the idol of an obsessive new religion. Whenever a gene stealer implants a victim, a horrific birth will soon follow. The resultant hybrids 
are grotesque and misshapen creatures that are as varied in form as they are hideous to behold. Certain features are common, such as bulbous craniums and snarling, needle-toothed maws, a pair of extra limbs ending in viciously sharp claws, truncated tail spikes and malted purplish skin. These initial hybrids are known as the first generation. The hybrids of the first generation will reproduce with newly hypnotized members of the cult, who sire young in their turn. This gives rise to the second generation. These new creatures are hunched and stooped, not in the matter of the old or infirm, but more like pressured springs that are ready to explode in sudden movement. These hybrids may have five, even six limbs, but their eyes and mouths are like those of their human parents, and they can make themselves understood in low Gothic. Though their minds are still so alien that they defy analysis, the second generation is sapient enough to understand its host's society. Some are even put to work in the industrial brotherhoods of their kin, their uncanny strength and resilience allowing them to use heavy mining tools and explosives with far more ease than a human operative. As each cycle passes, the hybrid offspring events fewer and fewer mutations, the third generation is typified by an upright stance. Though they appear human from a distance, on closer inspection they have heavily ridged heads, mauve or violet skin, and may even hide a vestigial limb under their clothes. By the fourth generation, the scions of the gene stealer cult can pass for fully human inveigling themselves into positions of power to further the aims of the cult. Leaders of uncanny influence emerge within the hidden hierarchy. Psychic magi and charismatic demagogues whose rhetoric inflames the subculture further. Fourth generation cult members can breed true. They do not give birth to untainted humans, but instead to pure strain gene stealers, just as alien as the original progenitor. The parents of these fifth generation creatures see them not as hideous hissing changelings that they truly are, but as soft skinned infants, innocent and sweet. They do everything they can to protect them, even giving their own lives if necessary. By this point, the curse's hold upon the dynasty is complete. The gene stealer at the heart of the cult, as the patriarch, has an inherent control over every one of these minions, no matter the generation. The patriarch unites them in a single sentience, a gasalt consciousness known as the brood mind. It is this shared sentience that makes the cult so tight-knit and loyal, that gives them uncanny strength and speed in battle, and that seeks to undermine the spiritual sanctity of mankind. Such cults have thrived in the dark corners of the Imperium longer than any suspect. On those occasions, when they rise up in open rebellion, they can capsize a planet's defenses in a matter of hours. The cultists of these grand insurgencies have spent their whole lives preparing for the day of the final conquest.
generation after generation, have been bred in secrecy, cycle after cycle, bearing nauseating fruit. The infected have spread the curse to others and to their children who in turn have infected more. Like a living virus, they breed exponentially, their numbers swelling until the rulers of the underworld are strong enough to seize the entire host planet. Though the later generations of each cycle have the appearance of common men, inside they are Xenos through and through. Their allegiance is owed only to the organisms that brought the gene stealer curse to this world. And the hybrid of their children, kindred, of their hidden kindred, their patriarch, star born and inhuman, squats at the center of a web of influence that expands until it covers the entire world. Every soul in the cult is mindlessly obedient to the repulsive creature and would give their lives to save him. And now a quote. When you fight these Xenos cults, you face not only those before you on the field of battle, but the untold thousands which seek to surround you, which attack your supporting units and are destroying your supply lines in perfect synchronicity. Lieutenant Colonel Uskar Uskra, 13th and 23rd Tiger Lizards. And that is part one of the Gene Stealer Cults, which is why I did the Death Watch just before this. But until next time, bye. Mm-hmm.